Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I am back with testing this Starship based Mars lander and well I have a solution, a potential solution to my problem and that was to remove the flaps from this body and make them their own part but basically turn them into a really large air brake. I don't know why I didn't think of this before but uh, of course we do have these air brakes uh, these aero surfaces and uh, here we have a relative wing area of 0.38 and it has other numbers there and I just decided to copy that um, so it's a really big air brake and we will see how it does I don't know yet uh, and we have to flip it around I don't know if what I've got in unity as far as the orientation of it is perfect I do know that this will work uh, that's actually zero zero for it. Uh, let's not talk about that right now. Um, th that's based on a supposition of how uh, the aerodynamic surfaces tend to work. But uh, the, you saw the attachment point was over here. Maybe I should just move that over here uh, for the center of mass things. But I don't think that's going to be a problem. But anyway, uh, they uh, well they just deploy like this, like the normal air brakes do. And I judged based on the surface area of that and just multiplied it out. Uh, so now we've got a relative wing area of 13.3 because about 35 of those can fit on this. And that is what I'm going with. The downside of it and probably the reason why I didn't think of this initially was that uh, we this is not a FAR thing. This is not a Ferrum Aerospace Research thing. One part that isn't configured for Ferrum Aerospace is these air brakes as far as I know. And so the way those work is very different from the way the wing pieces work. And, you know, that, that we used before. So sorry for the people who are giving me suggestions for Inferno Robotics. That might not be the way we're going. Now, you might have noticed that this is actually a flopping out sort of the opposite way we would like air brakes to work. We would like air brakes to go... Ah, we would like them to go this way around. So with the curved part facing that way, because the concave part is usually the part with the strut that's bracing it, we would have the brace this on this side, uh, not on the other side. So that's not ideal, but it's potentially not a huge problem because again, uh, Mars generally isn't a big heat thing. Uh, the, the heat is not a huge problem for Mars. We could probably have heat tolerance on this. That would be sufficient for uh, for the Mars entry. In fact, that's probably why they decide on steel for Starship. Steel can work for Mars, probably. Uh, well, at least a lot better than for Earth. And it's the it's the Earth part that causes problems for Mars. Uh, for uh, for Starship, you know, Earth is a whole other deal. Anyway, let's take it out and see how it works. I'll I'll deploy them once we get outside to and we'll just cheat it around Mars. So, will this work? Will this help? We should at least see an obvious effect from the air brakes, right? I mean, if if they don't do anything, that would be a problem. Of course, if they don't do enough, that's another problem. And again, since this isn't Ferrum, uh, we're basing it on basically the stock aerodynamics, and that's not ideal, but not necessarily wrong. After all, if uh, Real Realism Overhaul and Ferrum Aerospace was satisfied with it, <laughs> that these air brakes are okay, I mean, it doesn't say it's non-RO or anything, so I suppose... I suppose we could just multiply the number by the relative area between these air brakes and the other ones and that would be all right. So we're going to try and hit that location again and it would be to our benefit to get down there again because the atmosphere will be thicker down there. Somebody said uh, that they wondered how this sort of thing would be done considering the way this would, was turning out and I've already landed landers on Mars, right? There's there's a lot of ways to land things on Mars. This is just a particularly difficult way uh, because we've got a very heavy payload. That's basically what it comes down to. The problem is we've got a hundred tons up there. 
and that does not make it easy, especially when your surface area is low. Uh, so we're going to use the break action group there. And actually, I want to have them deploy all the way. Um, I'll try 30. I think we want it more like it's skimming, but I'm not sure. Okay, that leaves us with 975 meters per second. We are half fueled in this thing. Yeah, for instance, I have the Miku, the Mini Q lander. That doesn't have any problems because it's got a huge surface area. It's landing on its bottom side. And so it has, oops, it has the bottom side facing the ground the whole way. And it just lands on its bottom. And it's fairly light because by the time it lands, it's generally empty. It's mostly feel it's just a crew carrier. It's not carrying any cargo. That's the key. It's the not carrying any cargo part that's important. The problem with Starship, Starship also has a very big surface area and it's, land, it's not landing on its bottom, but it's going through the atmosphere with its bottom for most of the way. And it's ultimately trying to flip and land on its tail. Flipping and landing on its tail when you're in Mars is tricky because uh, you have to do that actually quicker than around Earth because Mars' atmosphere doesn't have as much drag. It's not slowing you down as much. So, and you, uh, Starship doesn't have the parachutes to help slow down. So, that's a bit of a pickle. Earth's atmosphere slows Starship down a whole lot more, makes it easier for it to flip. It can use aerodynamic surfaces to help flip. Uh, Mars doesn't do so much like that. So, the actual Starship plan is really hard. Uh, this is pretty hard too because of the huge mass and relatively low surface area and we have to use these big flaps. And one reason why we're not having them flap the other way, like attach to the bottom and then flap that way so that the curvature, the convex curve is facing the atmosphere is because in that case, our center of lift will be all the way down here and the center of mass is all the way up here with the payload. So if the center of mass is all the way up here and the center of lift is all the way down there because of the flaps, then the whole thing will want to flip around and go nose first. We saw before that it doesn't have that problem, but that's mainly because of the positioning of these flaps, which makes sure that the center of uh, lift is higher up and closer to the center of mass. So this sort of plan can work with these flaps. Using flaps can work, but we have to make sure that they're big enough for the payload or that we reduce the size of the payload so that the flaps can deal with it. It's just a matter of how much can it bring down? There's going to be a limit. And that limit is determined by what's called the ballistic coefficient. The ballistic coefficient is just how much mass you have on your surface area. You just think of it as mass divided by surface area. Sometimes it's flipped around and they talk about surface area divided by mass. So you want a lower mass over surface area that'll help you slow down easier but there'll be a limit there's going to be a number where beyond that number you're going to smack into the surface and you can't slow down in time parachutes help because again parachutes just increase the surface area that's all they do that's the whole point so increase the drag pollutes are another option for increasing surface area but they cause potential problems for landing if you want to keep them on if you want to preserve them and reuse them, then that gets complicated. Okay, we are currently slowing down here, and I'm going to take in the brakes. Ah, see, it stopped slowing down. So they have an effect, right? It's like actually going up in speed, and then we, when we extend them, it is in fact going down in speed. So they have an effect. That's the good news. Do they have enough effect? That is the question. I'll keep this altitude to that one since we have the true altitude down here or the ground altitude. We're looking like that, so we're too far north, but that, that can be okay. I just want to slow down. We're looking to be overshooting a bit right now. 
The ground altitude will depend a lot on where we end up. Well, we're over the valley now. Maybe we can hit that part of the valley if we don't, like, scrape this part. It doesn't look very deep like this, though. We just need the parachutes to be able to come out safely. That's basically it. They're drogue chutes. There are no main chutes. We'll use the engines for the rest. Well, I don't know what the parachutes can take. And they're just gonna pop out at a certain altitude. Right now they're saying red, so, well, that's not good. Uh, well. They're not getting out of red. Gonna, yeah. Okay, I think this is just too heavy for what we've got here. Eek. I mean, I could just arbitrarily increase the number on the flaps, right? So, but uh, I'll go with the idea that we should have a number that is representative of the area of this compared to the stock air brakes. I'll assume that that's okay. So, all we can do is say that it's not bringing that much down. And you can see we really don't have that much time to use much more fuel than this. We could use it earlier, but then that'll just make our trajectory steeper coming down. And it's better to skim the lower part of the atmosphere as much as possible to get drag rather than try to do too much uh, burning earlier. So, how about... I mean... It seems like we're pretty bad off, doesn't it? Let's just cut it into... cut it by half. 50 tons. Can we at least do 50 tons? Let me also try 260 there so that we don't get quite as high uh, as far north. And I'll try and do the burn a little bit earlier this time so that we get into the heart of Faust Mariners, maybe. Still seems a little bit far north. Maybe 260 was not the right way to go. So we've dumped 50 tons. Still not light, by any stretch. We have a lot more delta-v because we're lighter. Okay, we are in the atmosphere again. Now, just to clarify, I could have just tweak-scaled up the stock air brake. That was an option. Uh, but, of course, this looks better. That's really the only difference, I think. I think that's the only difference. We seem to be slowing down sooner. I mean, we're at 43 kilometers above ground level. Of course, I am in fizz warp, though. Uh, well, now we're falling short, figures. Still too far north. Uh, well, yeah, we're getting on to the higher side of things here. Well, about 3,000 at 20 kilometers through altitude. Well, at this point, maybe I should use some thrust in order to slow down for the parachute deployment. So we'll try that soon. Let's go for it. Still showing yellow over there. Well, it's not saying they're red. I'm gonna pop them out. Ah, they snapped anyway. Gosh darn it. Tell me you're red ahead of time. Okay. Alright, alright. Uh, that might just be a bad timing thing, but we're still pretty iffy. We're still pretty iffy. Hmm. But maybe we can underfuel this more. It doesn't seem like we have enough time to use all of it anyway. If we are, if we have less payload, 
that's 952 meters per second that should be plenty basically our variable here right now is how much of the thrust we use ahead of time to slow down so that the parachutes can deploy so we could use more delta v ahead of time to allow the parachutes to deploy but how much we use is a variable the more we use to help the parachutes deploy the more fuel we have to carry for it right so either we reduce the amount of propellant which limits our ability to slow down with the engines but would help with the drag or we carry more propellant to help with uh, slowing down using the thrust but that will decrease the effect of the drag leading us to be faster so that's sort of the trade-off that we have to consider at this point. The parachutes can probably deploy at 2 kilometers per second actually. Remember the parachutes are dependent on pressure which is a combination of the, the, the dynamic pressure is a combination of atmospheric density and speed. We have 1 one hundredth the density uh, Mars's atmosphere is 1 one hundredth the density of Earth's atmosphere. So in theory the parachutes should be able to work at 10 times the speed because you know the speed is being squared that's 100 so that's theory for you <laughs> uh, that's theoretical for you now whether that's what we actually get out of them is a different thing so you know you would expect you know at 200 meters per second is a reasonable parachute deployment speed around earth so you expect that you could get 2000 around Mars but <laughs> that's that's tough to say and you know Kerbal and FAR and everything have to real shoots has to agree with it and re realism overall has to agree with it this, it's a whole committee that has to agree about when the parachutes get to deploy so we'll see let's try this so I've reduced the propellant and that's our main tweak here I mean this seems like starting further south by the time we actually get there, because of Mars's rotation, it'll rotate into the orbit a little bit more. Okay, I'll try 150 degrees east. Still trying to tweak that aspect of things. Uh, just turning, changed our periapsis by a lot. A little bit slower at 20 kilometers this time. Well, I'll start the engine now or engines. We'll say two kilometers per second for the parachutes and hope. We really need the rest to land. Okay, two kilometers per second seems fine. Okay, could really get them to slow us down a little bit earlier. A lot earlier would be nice. Uh, that's not doing enough. We're not gonna straighten up. It's gonna be, it's gonna tip over. No! Uh <laughs> Um I once again probably should put gimbling on the engines too. Ow. Oh. I set them for a mass of 240 tons. I wanted 80 meters per second at 3 kilometers was what I said and it was happy with that and said yes yes we can do that the part mass is 0.4 I guess each so hold on yeah they're nice but the parachute mass is 1.6 tons <laughs> um, landing closer to sea level is certainly a goal so yeah we want to land closer to sea level and maybe just aiming closer to Ballast Marineris would be a good idea. Let, let's, let's make that bigger then. Alright. Let's say 30. 
Okay, fine. Can't do 30. Let's say 20. Mm, okay, fine. Now let's see what it can do. But we're not at 240 tons anyway. So you know what? Okay, fine. More parachutes. But they're getting... They're, they're really heavy. That's 2.4 tons of parachute. Okay, 160 it's okay with. Well, we don't need it at 6,000. We could have it at 4,000, and we never get like that. So, how about that? I will take 30. But yeah, the parachutes are not light. This is not. I mean, it's it's not a toss-up. It definitely would take more propellant mass than parachute mass in order to slow down, but still a pain in the rear end. Well, let me try and encourage it to land around here. Looks like we should have started the retro burn earlier. Nah, 2400 is too fast. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, well, I'm gonna try slowing down here. We're sort of at this edge of Faust Mariners. It's gonna go with 2000 meters per second. Okay, I just really need this to be more straight up and down, thank you. So we're, we're in Valus Marineris, but we're not in the sweet spot, if you will. Okay. Uh, uh. Let's have those help us balance. <laughs> We're rocking, but it's landed. Okay, that's with 50 tons. Okay, well, fine. We've done this test. This this is done for now. 50 tons is not the what I was looking for here, though. But it's something. Uh, at least we can... It's certainly the heaviest cargo vessel I've landed on Mars, I think. That's the largest amount of cargo that I've landed on Mars. So that's in that sense, it's pretty good. And if we're using simple logistics, which I will, I don't even have to take the cargo out. Basically, what this is doing is this is going to be landing the food, water, and oxygen on our on Mars. And then the rest of the Mars base will automatically just tap into it using simple logistics as long as everything is landed within render range, 2.25 kilometers. So with that result, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.